a KQED television production. Another umami bomb. <laughs> umami bomb. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine and More offers over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits with specialists on hand to provide advice on any item. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, in Fremont. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Integrated Resources Group has a vast selection of epic porcelain slabs and pentel quartz surfaces for today's modern designs. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, security manager and former Marine, Joe Ardona, returns to the Bay Area after 30 years, tasting his way around the country and the world. Now it's the Giants, local haunts, and iconic San Francisco eateries that welcome him home. Hawaiian native and stay-at-home mom, Seisha Locke, has her hands full with two little ones, but still makes time for her volleyball team. Always prepared to stuff a spike and defend with a pancake, her game plan includes eating one too. Aloha. But first, high school admissions coordinator Andriana Villa's neighborhood outreach extends beyond local families and community to an eatery or two. Her favorite serves food that's not as hot as Thai or as spicy as Indian, but borrows the stir-fry method from China. It's Burmese cuisine, and you'll find it in Burlingame at Mingalaba Restaurant. Minglaba means hello in Burmese and greeting and also blessing to the people. My name is Sandra Cho. I am the owner of the Minglaba restaurant in Burlingame. Our Burmese food is influenced with Indian, China, and Thailand, but it has its own taste. We use a lot of tamarind, cardamom, cumin, also coconut. I came to this location a lot for the shopping, and I know the previous owner, one day he told me he wants to retire. So, okay, let's open the restaurant here for the Burmese food. So, we were the first Burmese restaurant in the peninsula. It was a little tough for us in the beginning because nobody knew about the Burmese food. I had to explain it. Our restaurant is a family owned. The chef is from Burma and the recipe is from grandma to ma and to me. And maybe I will pass it to my son. <laughs> I like to talk and I like to see the customer happy. I love to hear that, oh, very good, very tasty. Delicious food, outstanding, and then I feel like, oh, I did the right, right choice. Mingalaba. So, Andriana, Mingalaba has a, has a meaning to it, doesn't it? The way that it was described to me is that it's very similar to the word aloha, where it mm -hmm. means hello, goodbye, um, how are you, like just a greeting. And I think that really speaks to the food. It's very family style, and when you go there, you have to share everything. You just want to share everything, and their dishes allow for that. Yeah. One of my favorite dishes is an appetizer, which is paratha, and it's very similar to the naan. Yeah, or, July, yeah right. because you can have that with any of the other dishes that you order. Sometimes I like to make little mini tacos with uh, everything that I order or just dip it in uh, the samosa soup. What did, was your experience at Mingalaba? We frequent several Burmese restaurants in, mm -hmm. in the city 
And so we were kind of, the expectation was, well, oh, Burmese, we have to be ready for the spice. Ah, okay. You know? Sometimes it's not as spicy, but that's more spicy. Yeah, but if you were looking for spice, it kind of fell short on the, on the spice. Mm -hmm. I mean, the food was good, is is well prepared, fresh. We really enjoy, en enjoyed the paratha and the, mm -hmm. and those the avocado rolls. Mm -hmm. They oh, were so fresh and the rice paper, it was just perfectly done where it was crisp mm -hmm. and you bite into them, you're like, you get that wow feeling. Right. And then one of the unique things we tried was the yellow bean fried rice. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where you think about it the next day and you're just like, wow, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a rice guy, you know, and uh, <laughs> I was like, gonna say that yeah, about I'm, you. I'm <laughs> You know, so, you know, I'm, I'm all about the rice, you know, and, and they had this kind of fried egg over over the rice, and, wow. and I'm all about the fried, fried egg. Fried egg the, is good yeah, on everything. Yeah, fried egg I'm is all about so the rice. Good, right? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and I don't know if you guys experienced it, but when we ordered our food, it was the fastest service no, we've no, ever seen. It was like it was less than yeah. Yeah. We less went than probably minute. like prime time, like around 6, 6.30, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we sat down, ordered our food, and it was there. You're like, oh, <laughs> this is great. Yeah, I was expecting I to like wait because it was <clears throat> full, the restaurant. And what did you have? Okay, my favorite is, you know how you talked about like thinking about that rice dish? Yeah. Mine was that tea leaf salad. Have oh, you guys yeah. right. ever tried that? Right. So this is my first Burmese cuisine uh, experience. Really? That's classic actually, the classic yeah. and tea it's leaf a, it's salad. It's kind of the benchmark yeah. for me. Okay, yeah. I'm glad yeah. I got it because the textures and the flavors, it was so fun. Like I'm salivating just thinking about it and even the way they do it, how they bring it deconstructed mm -hmm. and then they mix it for you and it's almost like you look at it and you're like, is this gonna work? And it just does. It Absolutely. Like garlic and the oh, the peanuts. fried garlic is the best. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One of my favorite dishes is the pan fried string beans, and then you can get it either with tofu, beef, or pork. And I've had it with all three. And we all the same. My girlfriend's a, a vegetarian, so mm -hmm. it's a, you know, that's one of the things about <laughs> Burmese, Burmese cuisine. cuisine yeah. is very that friendly. It's very friendly. Mm -hmm. Just crisp mm -hmm. and just the tofu so was so good. Yeah. Oh. It, I don't normally, I'm almost like mad about tofu, yeah. but this tofu, mm -hmm. the exterior mm -hmm. was very crisp and the inside mm -hmm. was soft, so when you bit into it, it was really smooth once you mixed it all together and put it in your mouth. So, so you good. went from meh to wow. Yeah. <laughs> I got their house noodles, and that was really fun too, because again, it's brought deconstructed, and so I just mm -hmm. love the fact that they mix it in front of you, and I, it almost feels like it's paying kind of homage to what Burmese cuisine is, like this fusion of mm -hmm. flavors, and it was funny because it's noodles, and then on top of it were these long, stringy things, and so I was like, well, what is that? He's like, noodles, fried noodles, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, yeah, I." Why wouldn't you put yeah. noodles, noodles on noodles? On noodles. Yeah. <laughs> right, but it works. Like, it was great. Again, it goes back to the textures and all these unexpected well, flavors. Well, we do, in the so. Bay Area, there's an incredibly large Burmese immigrant that, community. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, one of the largest in the nation. So, oh, you know, this is certainly a hotbed for great Burmese mm. food. And what about yes. affordability? Did you feel like you got bang for your buck? For most dishes, it was really affordable. The good portion size, and like you said, it's family style, so you're splitting a lot of the dishes. It's not your own personal dish. I went with another mom and we left satisfied. All right, well this is your spot, Andriana, so wrap it up for us. Okay, so for the best Burmese food, maybe outside of Burma, <laughs> go to Mingalaba. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Joe? I think if you're looking to experience Burmese food without, you know, uh, and not fearing the spice, mm. then go ahead and give Mingalaba a try. All right, and Seisha? Uh, for really fun textures and unexpected flavors and for tea leaf salad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you would like to try Mingalaba Restaurant, it's located on Burlingame Avenue at Lorton in Burlingame. The telephone number is 650-343-3228. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are recommended. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $20. You can eat and drink late at Joe's Pick. Tucked away in San Francisco's Cow Hollow, it features a traditional bar and a classic American menu. Pretty much the same one since 1980. This place with its old school vibe is called the Brazen Head. It's inspired by 1980. The carpeting with the velvet curtains, the brown wood, the low ceilings, the dim lights. 
everybody looks good in this light. So it's the kind of thing that everybody feels comfortable right away. My name is Eddie Savino, and I own the Brazen Head Restaurant in San Francisco. One of the things that makes us a little bit unique is that we don't have a sign. We took the windows out, put in new windows, put in awnings, and thought, oh, we'll just put the sign on the awnings. And then we didn't. And then it became no sign, no reservation, no credit cards. It's added to the mystique of it. Like, oh, that's that little place on the corner with no sign. And people like that. For us to be here for 37 years, we've served many generations. We have a lot of younger people who want to go to someplace a little bit different. Then we have the older people who appreciate this because it's from their era. Then we have people who recommend to their parents, oh, you got, Dad, you're going to love this place. It's got Manhattans. It's got all fashions. They have steaks. They have prime rib. The secrets of success are just treating people fairly, giving them value for what they're getting and making them know that we actually care that they're here. All right, Joe, you gotta give a little clue to folks how to find this place. There's no sign, is there? It's absolutely right. There's no sign. It's just one of those, those neighborhood iconic gems in the city. You know, when you walk through the door, it's like you're going through the secret garden and you're just discovering a time capsule back to the times where you could go to a place to escape in an intimate setting. You could have date night or you could be, you know, on the platform on the side of the bar watching the Warriors beat up on another team. <laughs> <laughs> and it really is. I mean, when you said bar, I mean, this is a belly up to the bar place, yeah. isn't it? Eddie's from the Bronx, the owner. Absolutely. Is... Well, a lot of people don't know, but it's one of the few places in San Francisco that's open late. Mm -hmm. is to that, eat late. Yeah, to yeah. eat late. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, I, I think the kitchen closes at 1 a.m. Right. And so a lot of the service staff that's a regular place for them. It's a steakhouse, isn't it? This it is. is. A neat place. I go there for the prime rib. It's perfectly done. When I ask for medium rare, it's medium rare. You could kind of slice the beef or the fork. I always, always order like a side of vegetables because I kind of like crispy vegetables, not overly done. I got the filet mignon, which oh, I nice. love yeah. because it just reminds you of like meat butter in your mouth. And mm -hmm. they do it really well. Like they're not trying to be fussy about it. They just, Absolutely. it's simple. Yeah. Yeah, and it's simple. I loved it. It's like sublime in its simplicity. Uh -huh. right? Isn't yes, it? <laughs> totally. And we also got an appetizer. Uh -huh. um, we got the artichoke and smoked salmon dip. Uh -huh. And that was okay. What? But what I appreciated was the bread was a little harder. But then the server, I asked, oh, do you have something softer to bring or a softer bread? And he brought their house bread, which was great. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever had it, but it's chewy. Oh, it's so good. I should yeah. ask for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was just <laughs> munching on that with no, my drink. My, she went Midnight. I did go oh, at midnight. Oh, wow. so, I did go so, at midnight. So I love you went at midnight, so I you like, know. Let's I mean, this, this is late the night, night, <laughs> late night yeah. yeah, and it's pretty full. It was yeah. full. Mm -hmm. I walked in, like you said, it's like you know, Cheers, where everybody knows your name yeah, type of thing. Right, like exactly. you walked in, and it exactly. just felt like everyone was just hanging out. Yeah, it was this fun atmosphere at midnight. You know, the staff's <laughs> been there for like years, maybe you know, back to the 1980s. He's been here since hello. Mm -hmm. 34, 34 years. Well, now, what was your experience, Andriana? I must have went on a really off night because my I ordered the burger because, like, how do you okay. mess up a burger? And my I ordered it medium, um, and I always order a little more than I want it cooked just mm. because usually places overcook okay. it. Um, but mine was more well done, um, and my bread for the burger was cold. Uh, so. It might have been off night, but it was not something that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But I too got the spinach and artichoke. It was actually spinach, artichoke, smoked salmon, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. And I guess I was just wanting a little bit more flavor wise. More flavor. Yeah. Okay. But I give them props for the smoked salmon. I yeah. love smoked yeah. salmon. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that was right. really interesting. Mm -hmm. They're known for their classic drinks. Right. You know, they've got old school uh, bartenders, you know, that I love. Mm -hmm. so, so. Classic place, mm -hmm. classic menu, classic folks still work. Working there. Right. Right. So I got a vodka tonic and it was more tonic than vodka. It was really? more of a wow. tonic and oh. a splash of vodka. A little weak. A little weak for mm. me. Right. I got a drink. Um, 
which is so odd at midnight. It's like, let's have a drink. But <laughs> my drink was actually really strong. Um, and it was simple. It was a San Jose Cabos. And it was tequila, agave, and lime. And very simple, but very strong. And it was a nice start of the night to just kind of relax. Yeah, see, that's and... why I'm kind of surprised, because usually <laughs> The drinks are stronger. Uh, yeah, weaker, I was surprised. Yeah, it was you know. strong. Was your experience with service good? It was. And mm -hmm. what actually stood out to me was that I never felt rushed in a way. It, it almost felt like they wanted you to just hang out, mm -hmm. sit back. Something I thought was a little weird, you keep mentioning that it's like known for the meat. Um, mm. And he, my friend had asked like the kind of steaks that they use and they were like, well, it's meat. That was their uh, answer. Well, and <laughs> shouldn't there be more to it? I don't know what the answer should be, but right, I feel right. like it should be more, more than, than meat. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. so it was a little miss there. I don't know. I feel like I should have gone with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about the roasted garlic? Oh, so I'm a garlic fan. You know, we, we finished like half the bulb that comes out in the bulb and the waiter came up and was getting ready to take it away. I was like, no, 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 I'm gonna save the rest for my steak. Mm -hmm. One of the really, you know, non-meat dishes that you should try if you ever go back is the clam chowder. Perfectly done, you know, the clams are fresh. Mm -hmm. You know, I always find myself like thinking about that clam chowder. It's that comfort food right. feeling. What about um, dessert for you? I got so, the creme brulee. Oh. It was a really crispy top and it was very sweet. I thought the flavors were really good, but the consistency of the cream underneath was a little too hard for me, almost like ice creamy. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you have to try the pot of creme though, the <laughs> chocolate pot of creme, because oh. it's just this concentration of chocolate, uh -huh. it's just more than enough for three people, and we were just kind of fighting to get it. Yeah. All right, Joe, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. If you're looking for a secret garden oasis away from a hard week at work, go to the Brazen Head. All right, and Andriana? Not really my spot, but maybe at 1 a.m. after a few drinks, I can deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Seisha? For unfussy, really simple food and solid drinks, head to Brazen Head. All right, if you would like to try the Brazen Head, it's located on Buchanan Street at Greenwich in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-921-7600. It's open every night for dinner. Reservations are not accepted. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $50. Remember, it's cash only. When talking about beverage trends, what's old is new again, and cider is back. Cider was the drink of choice for early American settlers, as the whisper of alcohol made it safer to drink than water. It all but fell off drinkers' radar until recently. Today, with the proliferation of craft beers, the hard cider category is also experiencing skyrocketing growth. Why? Well, many drinkers enjoy the familiar apple flavor, though cider can come from other fruits like pears. The alcohol levels are similar to beer, ranging from around 5 to 8 percent. And ciders, they pair well with food as they come in dry, sweet, sour, and sparkling styles. Cideries are popping up all over the country with more than 60 producers in California alone. So grab a glass of hard cider and toast to the past and the future. Cheers. A love letter to the islands, Seisha Spot merges Hawaiian classics with a modern twist. It's a small place with a warm, hospitable feel. It used to be brunch only, but now you'll find dinner too, in Dog Patch in San Francisco at Ina. It is hurtful hearing people say that, oh, Hawaiian food is pineapple and chicken and pineapple pizza. After a while, it's like not even a joke anymore. It's like, wow, this is what people really think about me and where I come from. I need to change that. That's how Ina got started. My name is Jordan Kao, and I'm the chef owner. My name is Chris Yang, and I'm the chef de cuisine of Ina Restaurant. So here we have our chow. I was born and raised on the Big Island of Hawaii and spent most of my youth there. Ended up cooking in Hawaii for about a year, realizing that that was my passion. I'm born and raised in the Bay Area. Spent a lot of my childhood in Hawaii. So the first time me and Jordan sat down, and I was like, man, this guy's my brother now. We want to represent Hawaii and all that Hawaii has to offer, and we also want people to have fun. I think it goes back to the love, the love of the land, Aina, which means the land which feeds us. You know, so there's a lot of respect that us as cooks put into our food. We challenge ourselves to use all parts of everything that's given to us. Not only do we get whole fish, 
We also source local produce. We get whole animal butchery. We do uh, whole pigs. We break it down in one day. It goes into everything. We make our own spam. 22 and 26 spam. Well, you know, in Hawaii, we love spam. You know, spam was brought to Hawaii from the military presence. And like Hawaii does with everything, you give us something like spam, we're going to make it the best, better than anybody else around the world. All right, Seisha. Aina has a real meaning to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's the land that feeds us. Yes. And how did you discover this spot? Well, because I am originally from Hawaii, I'm looking for places that remind me of home. And Aina does just a great job of this. They're not trying to be your mom and pop from Hawaii, mm -hmm. but they are still giving a lot of those flavors that feel familiar and just bring you back to home when you close your eyes. And when you talk to the chef, He's so passionate about and he's his from Hawaii. food. He just brings a lot of modern twist to it, which I appreciate as well. But it's fun just going there, and you feel really welcome. You feel that aloha spirit. And, and it's a husband and wife team, and yes, you know, and their a... their little boy. What is one of the dishes that you recommend highly? I have two. Um, the first one is their guava malasadas, and it's a Portuguese donut, but it's not heavy. It's light, and they roll it in coconut sugar. And then I'm glad they only put three because if they gave me six, ten, I'd probably eat them You'd all. Eat them. And then the other one that I love is they do Spam Musabi. And of yeah. course, being from Hawaii, mm -hmm. I love any time I see Spam on a menu. But this isn't Spam from a can. This, this is, is like not. He makes this his is, own yeah, Spam, that's right. which is <laughs> great. I didn't know he that. does, yeah. yeah. And then he puts it on a bed of lettuce, so that mm -hmm. freshness, I think, really helps. And you have the kimchi, mm -hmm. and it's served on with rice, and it's served in like a small bite, which feels really approachable. Yeah. Now, did you get the aloha feel when you went? Oh, I absolutely. I mean, if, right th when you walk through the door, I went on a Wednesday. Okay. afternoon and the place is packed right and I was like okay well that's a good well, sign. well and it started out as a pop-up so mm -hmm. then one of my best following. friends that I, that I dined with mm -hmm. he's actually half Hawaiian mm -hmm. and he was like you gotta try this place yeah. and I when I said I was I was reviewing it for for check please he was like well I'm going with you <laughs> <laughs> he's there yeah. every week oh, right nice. yeah so I had the Portuguese sausage hash okay. you know I'm always looking for that kind of crack when you bite into the sausage and that was true it mm -hmm. tasted like it was made on site and you know it wasn't overly greasy and mm -hmm. it was accompanied by like this perfectly cooked my favorite short grain man I wish my mother cooked this rice like this you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know well, there's and, so much Portuguese influence in sure Hawaiian yeah, yeah absolutely that, huh? no, and what yeah. did you have so I went for dinner and oh, okay. um, oh. I went with my parents and we shared everything we got uh, the spam bao which I loved as an appetizer oh, okay. it was just like a perfect oh, okay. mix but it was so good and then they put uh, I believe salmon roe uh, which I mean it didn't add too much to flavor, but for texture and color, it was really nice. Have you had the loco moco? I have had the loco yeah, moco. Yeah, so my friend had, you know, he or, always orders loco moco. Uh -huh. And we were talking about loco moco because, <laughs> you know, a it's, fun dish to it, say. it's a staple loco dish. Moco. It's a yeah. diner mm -hmm. type dish. Sure. You know, normally it's yeah. like a hamburger patty, mm -hmm. on, you know, on some rice topped with a fried egg. So instead of the hamburger patty, oh. you get the short rib, mm -hmm. perfectly cooked mouth-watering, yeah. you know, melt-in-your-mouth short rib. Uh -huh. And I was like, man, that's the way loco moco should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what about the cassoulet? The cassoulet was, oh my god, it was amazing. The way that they served it was deconstructed. It was, everything was separated. The mm. beans was in one spot, there was asparagus, uh, the pork belly, and then the sausage. And I think the sausage was the highlight of the cassoulet. The, my thing about Ina is that you mm. need to mix all the ingredients mm. Mm -hmm. together in order to really enjoy the flavors and yeah. they didn't tell us that till we uh, had dessert. You know that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. I didn't really like mix the like the kimchi and the in the Portuguese hash. Okay. You know, I wish the I The chef designs things to have individual right. flavors yeah. and then you put them all together for the it's whole. It's nice because they yeah. tell you when they serve you your dish and they're so attentive. They tell you all the ingredients of what is in the dish and they show you what everything is, which is great because I got to learn a lot. Mm. But I was like, so am I supposed to just mm. eat it separately? But, right. you know, just mix it all together. Tell us about the baked matcha mochi. This was by far my favorite dish. The mochi had this hard crust, and then inside it was this not overpowering matcha taste with a really soft, moist breading. And it was paired with a macadamia nut ice cream that was just, everything just melted in your mouth. I just wanted more and more of it. 
All right, Seisha, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. For a place that's warm, welcoming with the Aloha spirit and some great Hawaiian cuisine with some fun modern twists, check out Aina. And Joe? For a superb modern interpretation of classic Hawaiian dishes, go to Aina. And Andriana? Uh, for some modern Hawaiian food, get the baked matcha mochi at Aina. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you would like to try Aina, it's located on 22nd Street at Minnesota in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-814-3815. It's open for dinner Wednesday through Sunday with brunch on Friday and weekends. Reservations are recommended and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $50. So I want to thank my great guests on this week's show. Andriana Villa counsels us on the Burmese flavors showcased at her favorite, Mingalaba restaurant in Burlingame. Joe Ordona escorts us to some pub favorites at an old school spot, the Brazen Head in San Francisco. And Seisha Lok whisks us to the islands with her modern Hawaiian eatery at Aina in San Francisco. Ah, aloha. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, cheers. and cheers. <laughs>So now it's your turn. We want to hear from you if you visited any of our Check Please restaurants. You can post a selfie on Instagram, join the conversation on Facebook, and tweet us anytime. And don't forget to visit our website. All the shows are there, along with my wine videos and notes about the wines we drink on set. You'll also find our fun new web series, Taste This, where we celebrate food and drinks around the bay. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by IRGS Intrend Surfaces, Quieter Marbles and Rare Exotics. Over 10,000 slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin and at marblecompany.com. Mattress Systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Sutter Health CPMC, 7,000 employees, nurses, and physicians caring for their communities every day. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Total Wine & More offers more than 8,000 wines from around the world and more than 2,500 beers, including hard-to-find seasonal brews and imports. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, and Fremont.